Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Masaki Mori from the uh, Kita Kyushu and Kokula, the south part of the Japan. First of all, I I'd really would like to say thank you to the Sophion and the advisory member for this meeting and also audience and all of the speakers. I really appreciate uh, giving me uh, this opportunity. So let me start at the urinary system. The urinary system is to filter the blood to create the, the freshness, to, to keep its freshness. And basically the, made by kidney and bladder and connecting by the ureter and the ureter to make it urine. Urine is also very interesting by itself. It acts to remove the waste product and reduce the body temperature and also reduce water amount and also to control the ionic compositions. In some case, the, it, in, in, the, in case of the, the dog, I think the urine is act as a communication tool. So maybe in this case, uh, he's saying that Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, this is a, a kidney function. The kidney is the most important part of to, to make the urine. And it has a lot of ion channels. The first part is uh, glomerular filtration. It's over here. It, TRP C ion channels and the P2X receptors are uh, functionate. And uh, in the second part, the, the tubular uh, deabsorption or secretion, a lot of ion channels, including the potassium ion channels and chloride channels and sodium ion channels, and a couple of the TRP channels, including TRPV4 to 6, and also even for tight junction, make it uh, cationic ion channels. And in the last part, the, the water deabsorption or conservation. This is most famous that ion channel, one of the uh, interesting ion channels made by aquaporins. So urine production is controlled by a variety of many types of the uh, ion channels. So it is an interesting topic. But personally, that I am, I'm more contribute to the uh, ion channels, voltage gated uh, calcium ion channels. When I was a postdoc that uh, contribute to the calcium dependent inactivation of L-type calcium ion channels. And also that uh, I, I'm more interested in the uh, TRPC ion channels regulated by PIP2, where in the, we found that uh, PIP, PIP2 is important to regulate. And we also determine the binding affinity by the simultaneous recording of TRPC current and PIP2 by the FLET sensor. We determine that the uh, TRPC to TRP7 channel has a different binding affinity for PIP2. So the, the my main first main topic is uh, calcium channel module independent inactivation in TRPC6 ion channel. This ion channel is activated by the upon the activation of the receptors and has negative, strong negative feedback regulation by intracellular calcium mediated by calmodulin. However, the calmodulin regulation is very different from the L-type calcium channels. Uh, firstly, we have checked that uh, lobe specificity, and in this case, uh, it doesn't have any lobe specific. Either the, the N-lobe mutation CAM12 or C-lobe mutation CAM34 has a both almost equally uh, functionate disrupted uh, calcium dependent inactivation. Furthermore, the, not only the chem margarin, the coiled coiled domain located in the uh, C terminal part is very important for the inactivation. By chopping that, uh, this part, as you can see that compared to the wild type current, the, the inactivation is remarkably reduced. And we also did some of the biophysical ex experiment uh, using combined with the NMR study. And we found that stoichiometry of chemodulin and TRPC channel is not one to one, one to two. 
So based on that knowledge, uh, we make a model. The margin is combined to the, the different subunit and connecting two together. So we, 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 we are saying that this is a Cambridge model. I'm sorry again. Uh, and as, found, as we found that coded -code domain is very important and we, we realized that this is maybe connecting to the kidney disease mutations because uh, the FSGS mutations, I'm going to explain later, it has a mutation in the coded -code, code domain and we have tested the one of the coded -code, code domain mutations and uh, it's clearly compared to the uh, wild type current, the uh, current inactivation is reduced, the, the delayed. And this effect is uh, uh, related to the calcium dependent because of the inside of the experiment shows that uh, current inactivation is in induced by the increasing of the intracellular calcium, but uh, by co-expression of the, the FSGS mutant, the current is uh, sustained. So we think that calcium carbon dependent inactivation can be a, a underlie that FSGS mutations. So what is a FSGS? Uh, FSGS is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. I'm sorry, it's a little difficult to explain that. Uh, this is the FSGS can cause that uh, severe nephrotic syndrome. So it, it has a lot of protein urea. And this is very severe. 75% of patients may lead to kidney failure. And there is no effective medications for FSS, so it, it is unmet medical needs. TRPC6 is known to cause FSS, but the mechanism is still unknown. So this is a mutation, uh, the, the location of the FSGS. The, the red, reddish color is showing that the coiled coiled domain and carmogen bind domain. And green color shows that unkilling repeat domains. And the FSGS mutations are located in the, the contact region between the coiled coiled carmogen and unkilling domains. Although some of the mutations are outside of this area but basically all of them are located in the intracellular side. And we have tested all of the mutations, not, not all of them, but uh, the many of the mutations by using the special recipes over here. Uh, this is patch clamp experiment, uh, holding at minus 50 millivolt. Uh, calcium is 1.8 and with uh, uh, low calcium buffering, that's all. And we can see that uh, nice inactivation in case of the wild type. The other mutations, maybe you can, a little complicated, but maybe you can uh, understand that the, all of the mutations are somehow delayed inactivations except this guy. So we think that the calcium dependent inactivation is really important in the FSGS mutations. Uh, this is the uh, uh, summarized data. Uh, this is the, the, the peak amplitude. And compared to the wild type, the sum of the mutations increase the current amplitude, but not all of them. Only 30% or something like that. And even some of the mutations shows a, a weaker, smaller uh, current density. So which means that uh, some of them seems loss of function. However, when we take that residual, residual current at five seconds around here, compared to the wild type, most of them, more than 90% 90, 90 of the mutation shows that the delay of inactivation. And even for the loss of function mutation over here is showing that uh, delayed of inactivation, which means that we can uh, say that this is gain of function. So 
So we can say that the uh, calcium dependent inactivation is uh, underlying the FSGS mechanism. So by, uh, we also analyzed the uh, more detail. Over, until today, already over 30 TRP66 mutations are reported. However, the onset of age of FSGS is very broad from young to adult. And this is a plot uh, to, to, to the accumulative uh, causality based on the uh, FSGS uh, happening in the age. And uh, the mean of onset age is 20 years and plus minus 17 years. So which means there's no specific, no age specific instance. So we try to understand that the, the between the correlation between the onset age of FSGS and degree of inactivation. And we analyze that, that, that uh, in this case, integrative current density. This is the, uh, we, we, when we analyze that uh, first phase, zero to 10 second. And in this case, there's no correlation between the current integral current density versus the onset of age. But when we take the whole part, zero to 60 second, we can see some correlations. And when we take that uh, the late phase, 50 to 60 second, we can see uh, more clear uh, correlations. So I think the calcium dependent inactivation or the delayed, simply just delayed of the inactivation is contributing to, to the uh, onset of, uh, onset age of FSGS. Although we took some of the uh, mutations uh, like these guys, uh, these mutations, because of the, these are uh, found only two years old and seven years old a patient but the, the integral current density is uh, very similar to the uh, wild type. So the, for this case, we think that the uh, calcium, not, not in the calcium, I think the PIP2 may be Im important. So the, uh, the PIP2 is important to, to, to the TRPC6 channel regulations, and we have done that, that, that uh, identify the PIP2 binding site using the VSP experiment provided from the Dr. Okamura sensei. And we did the same experiment with uh, uh, Professor Su yesterday showed that. And in this case, TRP66 channel didn't show that any voltage dependent uh, effect. So we can see that uh, outward current and inward current, and we can take that outward current reduction and also that the, we can uh, measure the <coughs> inhibition to the recovery time course. So which means that the upper part showing that dissociation kinetics and association kinetics of the PIP2. And we have measured the extensive muta mutational studies. And we found that uh, pre-S1 domain is the most critical part for sensing the PIP2. And we did some of the uh, docking simulations with uh, Dr. Okumura sensei. And uh, we have confidence that because it has a lot of uh, positive ledges are located in the pre-S1 domain. So PIP2 must be bind to the uh, pre-S1 domain. Although in, in that case, we accidentally identified that as some of the, one of the curious uh, response. It, it is a, a K771Q over here. And in this case, upon the activation of the VSP to deplete the PIP2, the TRPC current is clearly enhanced, not in the in inhibited compared to the wild type. So completely opposite. So we, we, we think that this may be related to the FSGS mutations. Uh, these we excluded data from the, the previous plot. These mutations are very close to the uh, this mu uh, weird mutations uh, response. So I think that uh, some of the, most of the uh, case that calcium dependent inactivation is very important. However, some cases, PIP2 may be underlying. So let me summarize that one of the section. Uh, basically, we 
we, when we analyzed that genetic information, and if we found that mutation in TRP6 channel, and then we, we can measure the, the functional data by electrophysiology. And we, when we measure the residual current at five seconds, we can say you are going to FSGS or not. And when we take that integral uh, late phase of current density, and then maybe we can say that when will FSGS appear? This is very important because of the, some of the patients may be predict to the 10 years to have the FSGS and then uh, we can, uh, otherwise the person that who has mutation are better to you know, uh, change your lifestyle or something like that. And if you, you have mutations, but it doesn't uh, show that they are current, then maybe we can say that, uh, don't worry. So uh, we are trying to finalize uh, this experiment, uh, this data. And next part of my, of my talk is about the uh, compound. Uh, because uh, in Japan, that, uh, it has a lot of problem about kidney disease. This is a uh, dialysis patient number and increasing, the, the, uh, as you can see it, and the, now we, are, we have over 300,000 patients every year. And it, it is also a problem, problem in the cost. The roughly that uh, we have, we spend the uh, uh, Tengo Joen 1.5 trillion yen. So the, the reducing the, the patient number is uh, our, one of our uh, goal and try to, to, to inhibit TRP-6 channels. And for, fortunately, we could have a, a one of the interesting uh, drug uh, by using that uh, calcium imaging method. I'm sorry, in this case, that uh, not, not only that the patch clamp method, because we didn't have such a Q patch machine at the time. Yeah. But fortunately, we could have it. And advantage of this compound is uh, uh, oral administration is possible. And we did some of the uh, in vivo experiment using a rat. And briefly, I'd like to explain that my data. Uh, so far, uh, I, firstly, I, I have checked that, uh, we have checked that the urinary cations and so far, Potassium and magnesium in urines are not much difference by taking the, uh, the, this compound. However, the sodium and calcium is a little bit increased. So maybe that the, in the physiological context, uh, TRP C3 and C6 channels may be contributing to the, the absorption of the, uh, these cations. And we also did some of the, uh, the, the model, uh, model lab, uh, in this case, a pyromycin aminonucleoside PAM model, which caused that the protein urea by single injection. And you can see that the day zero without treatment of the PAM, and then uh, day three, day seven, day 10, uh, you can see the proteins in urine. And this sick band indicate the albumin. This is the data uh, uh, that we injected the pan over here uh, to induce the protein urinia and then getting increased. And then after four days, we give the L862 compound in, in mixed in feed. And as you can see that the protein urinia is gradually decreased and at the end, roughly 50% of the reduction can be seen. And also we did uh, that the blood alumin is recovered. So I think this is, uh, uh, we have confidence to have this effect. And also we did uh, some of the, uh, uh, this showing that the kidney section 
And we found that the, 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 this effect is not only the glomeruli, also showing that some of the uh, tubular system, it has a lot of damage by, by injection. And it's clearly uh, the, the tubular is uh, more, uh, it was expanded, but more shrink to the, similar to the wild type. So I think that we, we are having very nice compound and we are trying to push this compound to, to have more support from the government or pharmaceutical companies to, be, to move on to the next step. Although still we have to, we don't know much, many, many things, but we try to do that. And uh, this is my last slide. The, the thank you for the, all of the collaborators. And the first part is mostly done by Okada Sensei, Okada san, and the, the, the last part is done by Sakaguchi. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now it's open for questions. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Very, very interesting. Uh, as far as I know, TRIPC6 is expressed in the mesangial cells in the glomeruli. Is it right? Uh, I think that the, mostly the glomeruli and in podocyte. Ah, in podocyte food yes, processes. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, but for the cardiovascular physiology, smooth muscle cells also express TRIPC6 oh, yes, yes. and also 3. Mm -hmm. So if you apply the inhibitor of those chain channels, and it might have some vascular effects. How about that concern? Yeah, I think that's a very important point. And we checked that the blood pressure at least so far, and the blood pressure is not much change. I think this is a good question, to be honest. I was prepared for that. And uh, that so far, blood pressure is OK. But uh, we, we didn't check that uh, more detail. But so far, it seems no problem in terms of the cardiovascular and locomotion. So far, no problem. And, uh, last question is that to compare the current density at the steady state, mm -hmm. it is necessary to standardize the membrane expression level of the, all those mutants. Mm -hmm. You may also have to check all the mm -hmm. membrane trafficking or... We, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. It's a very difficult. Uh, to control the, to, to standardize the expression level on the, to the surface. So, but even without that kind of knowledge, I think even though we still have uh, some Corre relations, correlation. Correlation. Yeah. so okay. I, I'm going to say, mm, it's, it's very tough, tough point. But I know, I, I know, that, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Okamura from Osaka University. Thank you very much for uh, wonderful work. Uh, I have uh, I couldn't follow uh, one, uh, several slides uh, in your presentation. You uh, showed some correlation between uh, late persistent current and and uh, progression or the uh, onset of the, of the symptoms yes, yes. to start. Uh, uh, in the y-axis, you measured. Uh, the, the charges, integrated, in, integrated charges, or proportion uh, of the entire current, entire current. current. I couldn't uh, follow. Current density. A uh, current density. Yes, yes. Just simply. Current you mean density at five seconds after voltage step. Uh, you mean this? I call it uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, what is y-axis? A uh, y-axis uh, is a. Uh, uh, Integral current density from zero to uh, ten seconds. Ah, in this so, case, so that is a kind. Uh, the unit will be unit picoampere is, uh, or what or coulomb. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, kilo coulomb uh, per farad. Ah, okay. Yeah, that, that's that's absolute value, not the relative value. Okay. Yes. Absolute yes, value. Okay. Absolute okay. value. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Last question. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Koichi Nakajo of, of GT Medical University. Mm -hmm. So most of the mutant, mutant uh, mutations are gain of function. 
So I'm wondering if what, what will happen in loss of function or also what's the physiological role of these drip channels? Uh, the, I think so far we believe that this is some of the, the, the mutation, maybe the loss of function in terms of the current density, peak current density. But so far I think that the, most of them showing that the delay of the inactivation. So it, basically gain no function. And uh, the physiological function, to be honest, uh, in terms of the glomerular filtration function, I think that uh, we don't have much any effect by even though we, we, gave, we tested the protein urea in the normal lab, we gave that, that this drug, but it didn't show any uh, change so far in the normal conditions. But if we apply that, you know, uh, some kind of excited states or something like that, maybe uh, we can see something. But so far, yeah, no physiological uh, okay. functions. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.